Welcome to Kinta's Point of Sale. Let's get started. Before proceeding, please make sure that your inventory has been populated with data. When it comes to recording physical counts, we have the Count Sheet module. This feature is used for initializing the beginning quantity of the inventory as the system is prepped for use. This can also be used for weekly or monthly inventory counting. To navigate, click on Inventory. Then click on Count Sheet. To start off, we must first choose which location's inventory will be counted. Click on the drop-down. Choose a location. Then click Set. The second drop-down is for selecting a category. But for this demo, we will use the default so that we can see all items on the list. Now that we have set the location, the Count Sheet interface has updated. On the upper right, we have a barcode input field. Next to it is an item search. On the left, we have four tabs that will categorize our inventory during the count. To start off, click on Not Counted. This will display all items with the current quantity on hand. As we enter a new count per item, this tab will be automatically updated. On the list, we can see the name, unit of measurement, barcode, and the current quantity. Notice on the lower right, we have three buttons. Clicking on Export will download a file containing the list of items not yet counted. The print report will ready a print preview of the same list. The second print report will ready a summarized version. Notice that most items are currently zero. As of the moment, we have a 500 count for black pepper ground. And 340 for all-purpose cream. We will be using these items as examples. Now, let's go to the counting tab so we can start counting items. When using the barcode, we can enter the quantity first, then the asterisk sign, and finally the barcode. This is similar to entering multiple items in sales orders. In this example, let's count 400 for the black pepper ground. The original count was 500. Since we only counted 400, the count is displayed in red. This signifies that the stock has decreased. Next, let's use the search function. This time, we'll count the all-purpose cream. Let's enter 340. The atom is listed blue, indicating that the stock has remained the same since it has been last counted. For the last example, let's count the mineral water bottles. Let's count this as 100. Now it is highlighted as green, indicating that the quantity has increased. Again, red is when the count is under, blue when exact, and green if over. On the right, we have a button to export this list into an Excel file. Scrolling down, let's complete the count. Going to the Counted tab. We can now see all items counted today. Please note that when complete count is confirmed, this sets the new total for the item quantity. On the lower right, we have a shortcut for importing quantity. Here you can upload the CSV file that contains the amount of multiple items. Please follow the format on the example shown. More information on importing data is on the import tutorial. Going back, in a sample scenario, there can be cases of a wrong count. One feature of Count Sheet is that you can add or subtract quantities from items you have already counted. Again, with the same item, we can enter the quantity, asterisk, and barcode. Here, we receive a message for confirmation. As for the initial count of 340, the input of 50 adds to the total instead of replacing it. If a count accidentally went over, we can enter a negative amount using the same format. Now the confirmation appears stating a decrease in count. Once we click Complete Count again, the quantities of all items listed will be updated. On the last tab, we have the Variance list. All counted items that have positive or negative differences are included here. This value is the difference in the count. We have the beginning quantity and ending quantity, the unit cost, the supplier, the barcode, and the total cost. By scrolling down the variance page, 
we can see below the total costs and quantity. On the left we have the total quantity and cost that went over. On the right, we see the negative differences of quantity and cost. On the right corner, we have two print previews. The first preview is a detailed report. Here, we can also adjust the filters. This report includes all information regarding the item and the count variances. It also has remarks and the user that conducted the action. These reports can be printed or saved as a PDF file by clicking the EOD button. The second preview is a summarized version. Here, we only have the barcode, the differences, and the total quantity and cost. With that, we can conclude our tutorial. Thank you for watching.